hey Nick, so you watched my video, that's cool. I'm making another one because I don't have time to write stuff up. Um, so let's go over this real quick. Uh, initial reaction explanation is that the initial scan might be too aggressive and then you go on to um, uh, ask about the disadvantage of this and then recommend doing a recursive folder scan um, and looking for um, SAS files inside of stuff. So let me explain um, why that would be awful. <laughs> so um, when this pops up, the, the method I showed currently where we're looking for all of these things and then that stuff, um, this process taps the hard drive a couple of hundred times, so hundreds of times. If we were to go recursively, it would tap it hundreds of thousands of times. So um, a whole order of magnitude larger, um, several order of magnitudes larger, um, because uh, this is designed to be, though a little bit more complicated from a coding perspective, it's done this way specifically to be efficient so that it's hitting the hard drive um, with a very specific purpose and looking for very specific things rather than um, just scanning everything and checking everything possible. So we're looking for very specific folder names. Um, and why that would be bad is for example, here in Scout app, I've got a few dependencies here. So in my package.json, I've got six dependencies. Um, that is actually really light for most projects. Um, most, like, for example, just the Scout app website um, has, let's see here, the package.json. It's got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's got eleven there just just for to do a really simple static website um but yeah so anyways uh scout app only has six it's pretty lightweight but if i look inside the node modules folder this is one of the things that could potentially be recursively scanned which has just so much stuff inside of it <laughs> it's it just every one of these things would have to be recursively checked and as you can tell, there is a lot of stuff in here. I'm just kind of clicking at random. But especially if not just checking the folders and the folder names, but checking the actual files and whatever the extension is on each file. Um, like this process would take forever because there's just hundreds of thousands of things for it to do. Um, and some of these have their own node modules inside of them with their own node modules and so on. Um, because npm install is supposed to be flat, but it actually isn't because of a long story. But my point is that this is a very common thing to have, a node modules folder, and as you can see, it can be pretty lengthy. So, all the way back up to, wow, that's really long. Um, so this is why, especially node modules, that's one of the reasons why I would definitely not want to recursively search stuff. And... Um, so I'd have to program in weird caveats, and I, I shouldn't have to be scanning recursively anyways, um, because if it's not going to be called what I expect, it's probably not going to be there anyways. Um, uh, I mean, I may be able to find it, but it's going to be clunky, and there's a lot of unknowns there. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's why I, I definitely would say doing a recursive folder scan, especially for file names, would be really, really bad because that would take forever. Um, uh, the current process, when this loads up, there, that's it. It loads, and every time I tap the thing, it just comes right up. So this is less than a second, you know, less than a, a quarter of a second to scan my drive and find this folder here. So it's looking, see, it gets down to this folder here. So it takes, uh, it gets through the first five things and finds it and then returns the con, uh, it verifies that it has a uh, subfolders and then it returns the contents here. So that's because it's only five things in. But literally, as long as it doesn't have to hit like past here, this process should not go over a second. Like one full second should not occur. So this this whole thing should occur in less than one second. Um, if it goes and scans every single one of these spots or tries to, um, attempts to find uh, these uh, drives and fails or 
whatever. Um, this may add an extra two seconds at most. So this whole process, if it can't find anything at all, maybe be two seconds, maybe three. It all depends on the user's hardware and current system resources and stuff. But um, very minimal. And with an app loading when you first turn it on, it's going to take a few seconds to boot up anyway, so who cares? So that's pretty minor. Um, but if I were to try to recur recursively scan, then you would just be staring at, um, you see this little sidebar here that's coming out? So it's it loads this view first and then fades away when it realizes you don't have any projects. You would be stuck like right here, like as it's trying to fade away, like it would just f be frozen there. Um, no animation or anything as it's trying to process stuff. It would just like die. Um, and it would probably take like 30 or 45 seconds to, to scan everything. So that would just be terrible. Um, but you do bring up a really good idea, which I hadn't thought of, which I, I think this would actually work pretty well, um, which is um, rather than scan for the SAS files, um, instead scan for these locations inside of the project. So on initial load, of the multi-project import screen um, have uh, have a list of everything that it found and if it finds a project folder and inside of it it has projects uh, it should then loop through all of them and check to see what if any of them have SAS folders in these locations here and if it does, then it should show just those ones. But I do not want to presume that I know more than the user. So if they choose a different folder or even pick the same one and it updates, it should always show every folder that's in there, not just the ones that have SAS folders. Because maybe they don't follow this naming convention. Maybe they call it something else. Maybe they call it Sassy Fun Time. I don't know. But... I shouldn't be forcing them to name their stuff the way I would. They sh I should allow them to name it whatever they want and then import stuff in. Um, yeah, and that's basically this stuff here, uh, what you're showing, except um, we wouldn't be showing it from an OS perspective because this runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, so um, it would be shown in this uh, built-in UI. So we'd loop through everything and find it and then put that content on the page in here. Um, for people to interact with. Um, and you also mentioned, what else was there? Um, yeah, uh, from here, uh, you have a few options. You can walk through, walk your user through confirmation, making sure that the auto guesser did its part, change project name, icons, SAS, export directories, or do something uh, like what you have now, which is checkbox confirmation. Oh, okay. I, okay, I gotcha. So rather than... So you, you're showing this stuff here. Yeah, I think the, the checkbox confirmation works better here because you are... I'm showing you this is my best guess as to what all of your projects are. Or right, go ahead and select the ones you want to import and then you verify and say, no, I just want these two, and then hit go, and I'll throw in one that I know won't work. Um, I don't know, uh, docs, sure. Um, and from here, then you can verify this content. Like, we've already guessed all the stuff that should show up here, and then you can, um, if it guessed wrong, everything's editable. So we are just trying to pre-fill the content so you don't have to manually do it. Um, so if it guessed wrong in the image, you can click and browse to a different image. If it guessed wrong in the name, well, it's not going to get, the name is whatever the folder name is. But um, if you didn't like that name, if you say, oh, I want to change this so that this is colon space or something, then you can do that and it will update. So you can edit that. You can, you can manually edit the text here and type it in, or you can click the browse box, same thing with this guy, and then obviously change these to whatever you want. So... Um, yeah, the, the settings, I think, the confirmation of the settings should be done manually by them um, because it's probably going to get this stuff right um, or it's just not going to find stuff and you'll have to do it manually anyways. But I think looking at this, what it imports in and saying, oh, okay, yeah, this is fine, this is good, that's 
no, that's wrong. Let me change that. I think that's easier just to visually confirm it rather than to pop up something that, because if I'm importing in 50 things, I don't want to have to be shown um, this content here. The name, here's what we think the name should be. Here's what we think the input folder, the output folder should be. Um, I don't want to have to confirm every single one of these before I get to this view. I think before I click the play button, I can just click on this particular project and import another one. So I have two to look at. Um, boom, 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 whatever. Um, I should just, if I wanted to play the you go get branch deleter, um, I can just click on it once real quick and verify that, okay, yeah, that's the folders I want. And, uh, and that's good. But I want to rename it for the future or whatever. So, um, like, I think that this is an easier process rather than bombarding them with um, 50 imports and having to agree to each one. Um, as far as migrating goes, um, one of the ideas I toyed around with briefly um, before, um, while while we were kind of planning this this progress process, was. Um, uh, yeah, data. Yeah, there we go. Oh, scroll up. One of the ideas I had was let's let's. Um, is it possible for me to export out some settings and import them in? Like, let's say you work in a small web design shop and you've got yourself and two other people, then you want to convince everyone to use Scout app there. Um, then uh, you could set up all the projects for them that you guys use and then give them a settings file and they could import it. The problem with that is everything inside of Scout app is hard-coded it's because you can't really relative code it because it's relative to wherever the installation of Scout app is. So it'd be like dot dot slash out of your program files. But since it's a portable application, you could run it from anywhere. So that'd be really weird. So everything is hard coded. So it wouldn't make sense to send someone your, um, your settings file because they would they're, they're not going to have your username, right? They'd have to manually change all this stuff anyways. So the idea was if I can make that so it's so easy to import a project that you don't even need to share settings files, that's the best option. So that's, that's why that project setup is that way. So you can just tell the other people you work with, hey, download this program. Um, point it to uh, the folder that we keep all of our projects in on your computer and then just hit import and you're done. It's ready to go. So that was the idea there um, as to for the migrating stuff. Um, or like if you are changing from one computer to another uh, and you want to set up all your projects again, um, it, it's there's not a lot to set up in here, so it's not a big deal. So the whole like exporting your settings thing wasn't really a high priority and it is possible like as you see I have the thing open like people can copy and paste it to the same location on the next machine it's just not a f uh, there's no export or import button up here which is something I was considering initially um, but there's very few use cases for that and for the, the rare people who would want that they can just make an issue in GitHub and I'll give them the instructions on how to do it just copy it from your app data folder and paste it on the new machine but it would require the everything to be in the same locations to, for you to have the same username and the same folder structure and shit. So, um, yeah, that whole, that whole thing. I'm rambling a lot. It's late. Um, is there something else I was going to say? Yeah. Um, uh, one of the other ideas I had initially, I don't know if I said this yet or not, um, was, uh, I was considering having, un instead of just having new project and preferences, have another option here for multi-project import. And when you clicked on it, you would get a modal that would pop up, like the about modal or the preferences modal. One of these things would pop up and it would have the same view as what we see on the FTUX screen currently, this multi-project view. There we go. So um, yeah, this content here, this, this, this screen with the stuff, it would show up um, from there. So that's, a, that's an idea I originally had so that if I have 100 projects in here and I just 
I only really need to work on this particular one right now. I don't have to then delete the two or three things I wanted to import initially to be able to auto import 50 more. Or if I wanted to auto import 50 from one fo projects folder and 50 from a different one, like at work, I have a work projects folder and I have a GitHub folder. So if I wanted to import in the dozen things for work and the 50 or so from GitHub, then I could do that and I wouldn't have to do any of that manually. So um, that's an idea I've had as well and that's probably something that would get implemented um, with the auto importer. Uh, yeah. So that's that's my thoughts on your, your stuff here. I think I really like the idea of um, on initial load here, hiding anything that doesn't have a SAS folder inside of it. So I'm definitely liking that idea. Um, I still don't see like like I still don't have a good picture of w letting people know that if someone only has one project, they don't have a projects folder at all. Like all they have is the one project. How do they know to put that in there? Because the, the multi-project view can be very confusing to um, a newbie who's just learning web development stuff. Who, who's, they're on free code camp and they just learned HTML and CSS. And someone told them, you should try out uh, SAS. It's great. Use Scout app. It's really easy. And then they downloaded it and they don't understand the multi-project view because they've never even made a single project. So um, I think maybe that's... Um, I don't know. And maybe have like, maybe even have like a video link that links to a tutorial because we've already got a basic tutorial set up on the website. And if we update the FTUX, that tutorial will have to be updated anyways. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's something we're we're kind of getting lost in the woods over here in the multi-project import view. And there are a few improvements that you've mentioned that I think will be adapted and added to this, but. I think we really need to address how do people um, understand how to import the, uh, a single project. Because if this comes up and this is empty, um, it's confusing. So they'd have to come up to new and new project and a new user doesn't know, would have no way of knowing that this button exists or that it does what they want it to. Like this should be surfaced better and this multi-project import screen definitely shouldn't be the default view. There should be some other view, and then you click on something to get to that view. Um, so this is the best I've come up with. But I feel like there's something better that we could we could think of. All right, I'm done rambling. Um, I'll probably upload this tomorrow morning.